place. And I, uh, it's important for us also to understand and to accept the fact that we are the part of the globe, we are part of the world. And we cannot hope to be shielded from what is happening elsewhere. Even because they want to be lazy in thinking or they, uh, or they, or they believe that the ideological axis of the world has been set and set forever and it's either you are at one end or the other and therefore you don't even have to think of the great areas between the two axial ends for the ideological divide. That's the only thing about our ideology. That is, where we point one country and say that this country is still sustaining one particular end of the ideology, of the ideological axis. But it's very convenient to demonize the other and say, oh yes, I know what you're saying, it's because we belong to that other end of the Forgetting, to go back to this, forgetting that the history that we're witnessing taking place in the other land, that history has been enacted within our own society. And that we're also, we're also candidates for a big beat of that history, which maybe the gap with us, and when it was started, accumulated all kinds of debris, including the most dangerous weapons, you know, uh, armory. Failed to face up recognizing that we're being used again and again as testing ground for some of the most lethal uh, armory through Soviet wars, which are still going on. And devastated the continent from the north of North Africa to the south, up to today. And so, lazy thinking, I don't know, is just a uh, self-truncated uh, lack of a lack of Buddhism in a concept of the development of humanity and the conflicts of humanity. Uh, this is what is going to kill us. And then we use excuses like, uh, oh yes. These ones helped us during the liberation of struggle. Uh, therefore, we owe them. For how long are we going to be paying dividends on what was, in any case, uh, not a synthetic kind of a system? Yes, we appreciate the help that was given us, especially in the uh, liberation of the struggle. Nobody we must be angry. But wait a minute. Just for how long are we going to be denied given the authority of our own moral conviction? If we say it is wrong on the African continent for one nation to start from Madden to next, simply because that nation does not want to continue an association. If we did say it is wrong, but what is happening in Central Africa that is unacceptable? If we say the things which led to the civil wars across West Africa, we say that those issues you know, should be thrashed out in ways other than warfare. How can we say that it's all right for one nation somewhere else just to invade a neighbor and start annexing the people? If we say it is wrong for Boko Haram to annex land here, yeah, to dry our farms, put the ladies to torch, to the torch, kill them, the women, sell them into slavery, resurrect the era of the slave trade on this land. If we say that is not acceptable, how can we say it is acceptable elsewhere to annex other people? and force the nationality of it. These are universal issues. And I think we have reached the level that we can take a stand and stop pleading allegiance where such allegiance uh, is not in our interest altogether. In other words, all I'm saying is that if there's anything to be gained by what is happening in Soviet Union, they brought something on to them. 
to get us to go back to the drawing board. Reconsider giving the categories of association, especially where productivity is concerned. I bring those people to the basic level, but there are other forms of productivity. How to maximize the, the and what I'm going to the program the other day, fascinating, artificial intelligence. We don't have to reinvent the wheel, we can live from for instance, supposedly a modern, most sophisticated kind of technology which is going on there. We have people working in that sector. We have Africans who are sending experiments in capsules to be performed in space. There's a resurrection already, an intended resurrection of that movement going on uh, through Brazil, etc., etc. So people never really complain to give up. Unfortunately, leadership is not, it's not a vision most of the time. And there's so much petty quarrel, so much petty struggling for petty art and petty pawns all over the place that there's no energy left to be to pursue the simplest of vision in the United States. This is one of the reasons why some of us became a job back to a certain presidential candidate sitting right in the door right now before anything. Because we read what he had published and we felt that this is the kind of leader that we want in this country. First, from the beginning, we move on, we move on. But until, I'm sorry to say, we recognize the fact that we are back, a little bit behind where we were, but we get the defense. We're not going to be able to stand up proudly in the community of nations and say we also have contributed this. We can't take it away from us. And we can build on it. And we will steal from you if necessary. You mean the technology when we need that part of the legal way. They will be me. <laughs> Play the script of others. We thought they were bold and tough yeah. and original and sorrow and impeach. I mean, they can go back to the internet, <coughs> open their dictionary of abuse, and start all over again. And they will come back terrible. <laughs> you were not playing to your script. And if you had knowledge, if you read books, you'll be able to put two and two together and ask and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Even before this election started, is this perhaps what was going on at the time? And then you discuss, you ask others, and then you form your conclusion. But you just don't say, simply, who can shout the loudest? Who can make the most stubborn claims? And then, when you're told, listen, we've been through this before. You don't call your brothers out to be killed like they were once after an election. You will not stand for it. You better wait and make sure that it's true. And then, even I might forgo, you know, my, uh, my, uh, my child, that if you want me to go on demonstration with you, First, you must get the blue tape. You must be air conditioned. <laughs> and you must have a small bag. <laughs> and then you can push me along. <laughs> if it's wrong in the street, based on truth, I have no problem. I will reverse. But that you want to call out, even on the base of the unproven, Especially as there are other people, even in that, more or less, who will counter with their own street monologue. I will not stand by and be sad. Impossible. No matter if it's Karl Marx mixed with Lenin and Box, uh, Trotsky, who come down and say, they are the ones leading this revolution, and I should believe them. So, show me the truth. That's really, and there's no problem. So, that's my, that's always been my 
philosophy, and there's no way I can change it, or intend to change it at this stage of meaning. Especially as I'm also more knowledgeable about these things than many people, even though we don't say that. In this book, I refer to my primary chapter, the literally nasty. We all can be nasty. <laughs> yes, yes. And we deal there the fact that among many, many people in this country, there's a permanent monitoring system which consists of even Okada drivers who were trained and ordinary citizens, teachers who were brought down and lectured, some of them myself, embedded in society, and who found out during the lectures. So we know the training. And they being that results in selected areas through the train. Many foreign monitoring groups rely on these embedded. And so you don't come to me very because you say that one, therefore you one. I check against my own monitors. And I tell you, sorry, I don't think you made it this time, but never mind. Let's move on.